Team World. Recently, I've started archiving uh, Unicorn Riot web pages uh, as as a way to preserve the the events that are taking place uh, with Standing Rock uh, and water protectors in North Dakota. And uh, I thought I would take I would use today's uh, archive as an opportunity uh, to kind of show you how I've been uh, archiving websites. Uh, so. Uh, what I am going to show you is uh, uh, archiving a, a complete website uh, using MazaCoin. And uh, basically, I'm just going to do what I've been doing over the last couple weeks uh, while I'm recording it. So uh, this whole process will probably take proxim approximately uh, probably about 10 minutes. Uh, however, if you watch along, uh, I'll kind of uh, give you a step-by-step -step of what I'm actually doing uh, and, and why I'm doing it. Uh, so first of all, what you see on the screen now is basically how one of the web uh, archives looks in the Apertus client after it's been archived. Uh, the Apertus client currently is just a, uh, it's basically a test bed of a bunch of different functionality uh, that we, we hope to put into an official uh, client uh, within the next year or so. Uh, but for now, you know, we're just testing out a bunch of different things. Uh, so, of course, we're not using uh, the best uh, programming standards and things like that. Uh, but we are finding out uh, lots of interesting, uh, cool things that we can do on blockchains. So it's been a fun project. Okay. So, uh, first of all, I, uh, in order to uh, create a snapshot of the website that I've been archiving, uh, I've been using a Windows 10 device, uh, and on Windows 10, you can still access uh, the older Internet Explorer uh, by going and browsing for Internet, and you'll see the Internet Explorer desktop app. I like to use this one because it has a nice uh, save as feature that I couldn't find on the new Edge Explorer uh, window. However, it might be there. I just haven't took the time to actually look to see if I could do that with Edge. So I'm using uh, the old Internet Explorer browser to, to do that. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. And uh, now I'm going to browse out to the uh, Unicorn Riot Ninja web page. Uh, and this is uh, this right here is actually the, uh, s the page that I want to uh, archive. Uh, it's, it was one that was released October 26th. Uh, so. I want to save this, so I'm going to go to the options, select file, and then save as. And then it, you'll see that there's different options on the on this list. I want to select uh, web page complete. And then I like to change the name that it suggests, which is really long here, to something uh, smaller that's easy to remember. So I'm going to change it to unicorn 20. You'll see why it, uh, I did this in the future. Go ahead and save. Okay, so that is basically uh, going out to this website and it's uh, taking all the images, downloading them, it's taking up, taking the uh, web pages for uh, or the HTML content for at least this page and downloading it as well. And what it created was uh, it created a file called Unicorn 20 and also created a folder called Unicorn 20 underscore dash files. Awesome. So uh, we basically have saved that. And if we uh, double click on this, uh, file and open it in Internet Explorer, uh, you'll see that it will eventually open up uh, and it will show you that web uh, site. It does take a bit longer to open up and I believe that's because the website uh, has some, some Java includes and has some other things uh, down here in the bottom that uh, have to time, basically have to error out uh, before they'll let the page display. So it does take a little bit of time to display uh, once you load it the first time on your web page, which you can see now. But I assure you that eventually that web page will load. So I just wanted to click on it and show you uh, that it is a web page that's uh, off my local uh, desktop right now. So we'll close that. Uh, so in order for this to function uh, within an Apertus, Apertus uh, can only currently archive uh, uh, web pages that do not have a uh, root folder structure. So the way this currently is with a file, uh, Unicorn 20, and a folder uh, won't work with a Pertis. So what we'll have to do is uh, we'll have to take this file and edit it in order for it to uh, work properly 
within the root of this uh, file. And to do that, uh, what I found works pretty well uh, is you can open the file with Notepad. And if you remember, I, I named the file unicorn20. So we're going to do a control find and we're going to type in unicorn20. Find next. And you'll see that uh, it found something here, unicorn20 underscore files slash. So I want to select that whole thing. And what we're going to do is we're just going to replace that string anywhere that string is found in this file, we're going to replace it with null. Uh, we're basically just going to delete it. It looks like I'm getting some messages here. I'll just ignore that. So we'll copy this and select edit, replace, and place it in there. Uh, and it's important that you put the entire underscore file slash, uh, and we're replacing with nothing. So we'll just do replace all. And there we go. And that's it. So now we're going to want to file save as, and we're going to place this inside the unicorn 20 files folder. But, and this is very important, uh, in order for Pertis to pick it up uh, and display it uh, automatically, uh, instead of, uh, instead of, uh, instead of it uh, showing an index page and showing you all the files, uh, if you would like a web page to basically automatically show up when you browse to a transaction ID, that web page currently has to have a file in it uh, called index.html. And the L is important because a Pertis by default creates a, already creates a file called index.htm. So we uh, want, if we, as long as we name this file index.html, which is also a standard uh, extension for this type of a, a file, a Pertis will see that and instead of loading the htm page, which is what it normally does, it'll load this html page, uh, which will show you uh, the web page, which will actually be the page that you uh, archived. So we are going to take the unicorn20 uh, uh, HTML file and we're going to save it into the unicorn20 folder as index.html. Let's save. All right. So now what we've created is a folder uh, that basically contains everything required to make that web page uh, uh, be displayed as you saw before. We are going to remove some things uh, from the unicorn20 uh, file uh, because uh, again they're folders and uh, we don't uh, Reporters can't support folders. Uh, we, we, we could have uh, basically archived this file uh, and then updated this script on, on the index.html page to link back to these play files, but uh, I'm not, I really don't uh, really need these files for it to work properly, so I'm just going to delete those folders out uh, and see if we see anything else in here. Looks pretty good. Cool. So in order to archive this, uh, I would basically uh, would just have to now open a Pertis, select a blockchain, select Mazacoin, select an account, money. Uh, if you would like, uh, I would suggest that you would always uh, sign your archives. Uh, signatures are what allow other people to trust you. If you don't sign your archive, uh, when this, when you transmit this uh, file, uh, the uh, by default, uh, it's going to filter out all of your HTML content. If you sign something, uh, it will still do that. However, the end user has the option to trust you, uh, and and if they trust your signature, uh, then the next time you send something uh, to them, it could come to them automatically as a web page without them having to. Uh, remove the filter and regenerate it. So signatures are important uh, if you want people to start following uh, your content. You should sign things. Uh, all right, and then uh, so you would select a signature, Standing Rock, and then you would select Attach and browse to the folder that we just created, Unicorn20, uh, and then just Control A. We'll select all the files and select Open. 
and it'll it'll tell you uh, the estimate of how many coins it will actually uh, it might take to archive this website. And for this particular website, it looks like it would be 3.822 uh, uh, Maza coins required to actually etch it. The final step would be to etch, and then and then basically uh, go away and wait for a few hours uh, as uh, Apertus et slowly etches all those files uh, that you selected uh, into uh, transactions, uh, and then basically assembles them all into a into a root transaction ID that can then uh, be used by any other browser to kind of build that website back uh, out of those transactions. <clears throat> but I'm not going to do that right now because I, I, I have already archived uh, uh, Standing Rock uh, websites. So since I've already archived at least one Standing Rock website, a lot of the files that you see uh, here, I've already archived with my uh, previous uh, archive. So uh, Apertus has a nice function that would that allows me to uh, link uh, data from a previous archive into my new archive. So I want to use that uh, feature in order to really greatly reduce uh, the amount of um, the amount of data I have to archive in order to etch this page because I'll be reusing uh, data from my previous etching. So. Uh, I've already grabbed a previous etching. Uh, I, I grabbed the transaction ID folder of a previous etching. And to get to the transaction ID folders, uh, basically within your Apertus uh, folder where it's running, uh, you'll see that there's a file called root, or a folder called root. When you open up root, uh, every transaction that you've ever found or browsed uh, will be uh, within that root folder. So what I did is I found a previous Sending Rock uh, uh, web and I copied that whole folder out onto my desktop uh, right here. You can see it here. <clears throat> so what I, what I want to do is I want to find the differences between these two and I only want to save the differences on my new etching and link this old folder uh, along with it. And in doing that, I can uh, create uh, a brand new page, but any of the content like the CSS and the images and stuff up here uh, will be reused from a previous etching. So to do that, what I found works pretty easily uh, is, if you, is if I open up my new uh, etching, we'll say Control A, selects all, Control C, copies it, and then browse to my old etching and basically I just want to paste it into this folder, control V. Uh, it's going to say that there's a whole bunch of files that have the same names, which is cool. Those are the files that I don't want to have to re-etch. So for those, I don't want to replace them. I just want to skip them. And by skipping them, uh, you'll notice that the only files then that were actually pasted in here were files that were different. Uh, and so I do see a, a one HTM, HTM page, which is probably used for a video include. Uh, and then I see uh, quite a few uh, PNGs, uh, but that's really the only difference. The rest of the stuff uh, was already duplicated. So uh, I don't, uh, there's no sense of me having to uh, uh, save them twice. Normally what I would do uh, at this time is I would take all these PNGs, and I think I'm gonna do that. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna do this live, so uh, I might as well do it exactly how I would do it. And I usually browse to, uh, Tiny PNG. They offer a nice free service uh, that lets you compress uh, PNGs, uh, and I've and I've found that uh, Unicorn Riot, their PNGs uh, are are usually kind of uh, kind of large, and I uh, since I'm putting these on Maza coin, uh, you know I do, I don't want to bloat want to I want to bloat the coin as le as least as possible, and also the bigger the file is, the more it costs. So I want to reduce these file sizes. So I'm going to basically copy all these PNGs that were new, and I'm going to sh and I'm going to compress them. Uh, Apertus does have a compression feature internally, however. It's kind of buggy, so I'm not recommending that you. Uh, I'm, I'm actually recommending that you turn it off for now, and we've actually disabled it in code. It does work uh, on occasion. Actually, it works most of the time, but sometimes it really, uh, uh, really, really messes up your JPEG when it when it tries to do its compression, and it doesn't give you a preview before it uh, compresses. So that's a problem. Uh, you don't want to waste uh, money on a on a uh, corrupted image. 
All right, so grab all these PNGs, drop them in here. Uh, and you can see that uh, it basically saved me 124 kilobytes. Cool. Uh, I can say download all, open. And then uh, control A, control C. And I'm just gonna copy these now smaller images on top of the, the older ones. Replace them. Uh, sometimes it doesn't like. Something's holding on to them. There it goes. Okay, so we've uh, copied all the new ones. And then let's just do a sort by date modified. Uh, we can see all the newest ones here. There we go. And we're going to select all the new ones. And we want to also select index.htm, uh, which was new. And I thought this file too, and I'm not sure why that one isn't. Ah, that's because I'm in the wrong folder. <laughs> so we actually want to go into the folder that we uh, pasted everything into. That's why it's not making sense. Here we go. So the folder that we're actually going to be uh, pulling them on is the folder that we pasted the items on, uh, not the original uh, uh, folder. OK, so let's paste them into here. And now when we do uh, date modified, you can see that uh, it did find that HTML page. It found the uh, all the JPEGs. So we want to select all these. The only thing that we're missing uh, is we're missing that uh, index.html page here. That one is important. And I'm assuming we must not have gotten it. Just to be safe, I'm going to save this one. Oops. I'm going to grab it and copy it again. Now remember the index.html page was the page that we used uh, that we renamed. It used to be unicorn20.html. We put it in there. Uh, another thing that I want to do before I uh, try to archive any of this uh, is I'm going to delete this index.htm. It's not something that will ever be uh, archived. This index.htm is basically the old index page that was used to display the content of this website before. Actually, I can show you what that was. Uh, it was basically just an index page showing you all the files that it had uh, found. So now let's open up a Pertus, uh, select Standing Rock, and we're going to do this. Uh, this will be a live archive. Desktop. Browsing to the one that we used to do the copying. And selecting only the newest files that have changed. Select open. Uh, now we also want to, uh, we have to tell Apertus to link. So we're going to copy the transaction ID of, the, of that uh, previous folder as well. Let's browse to it just for good measure. So it's actually going to go out and build that uh, page from the Mazacoin blockchain. So bear with it.
Cool. So, this is the one that we're using to uh, link in order to get the uh, already existing CSS information. So in order to do that, you just basically have to hit this link button. Uh, it did happen. We're, we're going to make that visually more uh, stand out. Uh, it did happen. If you were to able, to, if you were able to go and scroll down to yeah to the bottom of this, you can see that uh, that transaction ID uh, does exist. And actually, I just realized something here that's going to cause a big problem. <laughs> The fact that this string, I've never actually done, done it this way, so this is this is fun. You can see how, uh, you know, this is still beta and I'm, we're figuring things out as we go. But if I would have archived that, I would have caused some problems because since there's a transaction ID in the URL, the logic right now looks in this path for transaction IDs and then, and then links them. So this would have caused uh, Apertus to link this file probably 50 different times because it would have found the same transaction ID uh, for every file name. So I'm going to remove all of this. And in order to get this to work, I'm actually going to have to change the name of this uh, folder to uh, something else. Perfect. There we go. And let's reattach. Grab just the newest ones. Make sure that index.html for sure is definitely a part of that selection and that it's a newer index.html file. And for now, uh, I'm actually not going to sign this. Uh, I'll be signing this later. Uh, when I associate this with the uh, water is life keyword. So after this is a successful etching and everything looks well, uh, I'll come back and create a new etching where I link this uh, with the water is life keyword and profile and a signature and then allow people to start following uh, the Unicorn Riot web pages uh, uh, as they come in uh, with active content. Uh, as long as they trust the signature that is associated with them. So for now, I'm just going to etch it as is. So I've selected all the files uh, and we will just hit etch. So the etching process itself uh, is gonna take quite a bit of time. Uh, since this is etching uh, 0.7 Maza coins, uh, I, would, I would estimate that this etching is gonna, is gonna take within uh, three hours to complete. So I'm not going to record three hours worth of etching. I'm just gonna let you know that uh, that is really the last step of this process. Uh, and now it, it is just a matter of sitting back and uh, kind of waiting for the etching to finish. Uh, once it finishes, uh, it will rebuild the, the new Unicorn Riot web page and it'll show up in your right uh, browser window you know, right here. So uh, as that's etching, I'm going to uh, sign off and quit this video. Uh, thanks very much for the, for watching it. And uh, if I have more time in the future, I might come come back and uh, you know cut out all the pauses and stuff. But for now, uh, you get to see it as it is. Uh, what you've noticed that Mazik, that it seems to have paused. It's not uh, doesn't appear like it's etching any longer. Uh, well, it actually is. Uh, what's what's going on is a Pertus has logic in it. Uh, and it says it senses that it's it has created a certain amount of etchings uh, without without receiving a single confirmation yet. So it has a, a has a buffer uh, that kind of prevents it from uh, putting more uh, transactions into your wallet uh, than your wallet can handle before it goes offline. Uh, so once it reaches that count, uh, it will wait and pause here uh, until, Maza, until the Mazacoin wallet or your Bitcoin wallet or whatever wallet you're using, it'll pause uh, until it uh, catches up. Once it, once it catches up, it kind of begins again. And uh, that's why this process takes a while. Uh, because after, uh, I think it's after 5K of information, you begin to hit that, uh, that, that uh, buffer. 
that's going to start to kind of slow things down. Uh, however, uh, you know, just be patient, just wait, let it go. And uh, within a few hours, you know, go make yourself some tea or something, come back, uh, make yourself a pizza. I don't know, three hours, that's a lot. Make yourself three meals and eat them all. <laughs> and then come back and it should be done. Uh, and if, if you want to continue following uh, Standing Rock, uh, there's a couple different ways you can follow him. Uh, we're using the Standing Rock keyword, uh, which uh, is basically, uh, let me type it in here, Standing Rock, capital S and capital R. Uh, and we're also using the Water is Life keyword with a capital W, capital I, and capital L. It is case sensitive. Uh, so if you're interested in following Standing Rock uh, and, uh, and what's happening there, uh, uh, it's uh, simple enough as downloading the Mazacoin wallet, uh, letting it sync, hooking up to a Pertis, and then uh, typing in uh, pound capital standing capital rock <laughs> into the search uh, screen, and it will uh, it will first the first time that you do it, it's going to prompt you to do a full re-index scan of the entire uh, blockchain. Say yes. Uh, after that, as new stuff comes in. Uh, uh, you will just receive it uh, as it's coming in. Either the, you will only need to do the re-index uh, one time. And if you uh, if you have multiple keywords that you want to follow, for instance, if you want to follow both Waters Life and Standing Rock, uh, when it asks to do a full index scan, say no until you've entered as many keywords as you'd like to follow. And on the last keyword, uh, say yes, do a full index scan. And when that happens, it will uh, basically scan them for all your other keywords as well. All right. Thanks very much for your time and have a great day.